All right. I am not the best and I've had no real training, but I want to make a monster. So, uh, the best way to do so is to get out of shape. <laughs> Something to work with, right? Um, so for this one, it's a real... I've, I've had this idea in my head for a long time. In the first Spyro game, uh, in the second world, there is a... Uh, there's a Nork that runs up to a cannon when you kind of get in range of him, and he tries to shoot the cannon at you. I've always wanted the actual cannonball to also be a creature that kind of is shot out at you and then chases you for a little while. Um, so in order to make this cannonball, let's say, <laughs> that that's what it is for now, it, give it more life, more expression, the easiest way to do that, in my experience, is to give it eyes. So, uh, I guess that's a cheating way to do it. So we simply just highlight some of the surfaces that are in this sphere already. We'll shift D to duplicate them. So now there we have a separate entity. We'll hit three on the numpad to go into a right orthographic view. Hit G. And then Y. So we've grabbed it and now we've isolated it on the Y axis so that we can just move it away. And we'll just let it hover there for a little while. <laughs> just let it just hang so that we can, we'll manipulate with those later. Um, and then just to make it clean and easy to work with later, we'll separate them from the sphere mesh so that they're own entity now. And we'll just rename it as eyes to keep things simple and organized. Um, actually, I don't think we'll mess with the eyes too much right now, because if I wanted to do any sort of like pupils or anything like that, I'd actually do that in the texture painting. I wouldn't try to 3D model a pupil or something. Um, plus, all the animation would come in through the exchanging of what texture the eye is on. Uh, so the second phase in making this like a creature is to make it kind of intimidating. So the way that I would make a sphere intimidating is by giving it a mouth. <laughs> Jack lanterns are pretty intimidating. Um, and one of their biggest features is their grin. Really. Arrgh. Slowly becoming the cannonball luchador. Uh, so the same thing we did with the eyes is shift D to duplicate. So it's its own thing now. Right click to just kind of reset that. Three. Grab. Isolate the Y. Move it away. Now it's its own thing. Separate it so that it's easier to manipulate and we're not accidentally messing with the sphere behind it. This is the jaw. And so it's not really that much of a jaw right now. So we'll actually just go back into object mode. We'll isolate the jaw, go into edit mode. And then I want to make this more, it's going to be more of like a lower jaw kind of thing. Um, it's going to, the, the image in my head is more of like a what I can only describe as a like a junkyard jaw. You know, it's like this heavy metal, bulletproof steel tombstone kind of looking thing. Um, so we're gonna delete these vertices. Is that the wrong one? No. Okay. Uh, and actually, I think I'm going to try to do it the opposite way. So we'll just control Z all those, and we'll actually do it this one. Delete that one, delete that one, delete that one. So now we've got these ones. So now we're going to perform the fill function. So that's just the F button on the keyboard. So we'll select this point and this point, and we'll fill the space in between. But that just is the line right now. If I wanted the actual face to be filled in, um, 
all three points have to be selected and then F and now we've got a face. So we're just gonna do the lines or the edges for now. Selecting the vertices and then hitting F to fill. And then, because I like to do things the long and tedious way, but it makes sure that it gets done properly. Uh, later, oh, I've already did that one. Later, I'll probably go and learn an actual quick method to do that so that it's more efficient and I can produce things a lot more regularly but um, for now that that works for me and I'm sorry if it's too slow for you <laughs> all right so uh, now I've got this jaw looking kind of thing but it's not really it doesn't really fulfill the description of the junkyard that I've been alluding to the whole time so we're gonna select the whole thing by pressing a I'm gonna extrude and then we're going to hit G and then Y, and then we're going to bring that out. So now it's this more, it's going to be this more heavy metal thing. Uh, now this is more or less just kind of like a minor creep in the, in the entire scheme of that world. If this was like the boss of that world and it took up like half of an arena, I, w I probably would actually go in and um, model in some little rivets and stuff to kind of make it seem more heavy duty metal sort of thing. But um, because he is just like a minor kind of creature, I would skip that and I would cheat by go um, just painting in the rivets as part of the texture much later. Um, so now we're gonna give this jaw a home. In the actual head, so we're gonna open it up. Uh, all right. Go back to the jaw. Three, G, Y, and now I move it back. So now it just kind of exists here. So if we wanted to animate it, it would do this kind of a, it would do this kind of a thing. Rah, rah, rah. With more of a probably like a, it would probably come out more, but that's the general idea. So now we've got we've got a face. We've got general face. Um, being that it's in the Nork army and is trying to keep Spiral at bay, uh, it would probably want to protect its head from all of the the high flying it's going to be doing pretty soon. So we're going to give it a helmet. Um, despite the fact that the outfit that the Nork wears in that world um, representing more or less of like a more Russian military in my opinion uh, I'm just gonna give him like a standard kind of dome helmet that one would see in like the US Army or in like British forces uh, shift D. So now I've got little little skull cap. Thump. And then uh, we'll scale it out. We'll scale it. Scale it a bit on the x axis as well. Okay, and then 
Um, now, to me, that doesn't really look very military helmet-like. So what really, what really set it off for me was by isolating this edge with um, Alt left click, hitting the scale, and then we scale it out just a little bit, not a lot. And that really kind of gives it that that uh, that drill sergeant. Excuse me, son. And you thought you knew how to get launched out of a cannon. I've been being launched out of cannon since... I don't know. <laughs> since 1335. Whatever age these dragons live in. So I just remembered that I need to select all of this, and we need to make the helmet its own thing. Okay. So now that the helmet's its own thing, um, we can do stuff to the head, we can do stuff to the eyes, and it doesn't really affect the helmet anymore. And if we wanted to do stuff to the helmet, then we can do that and it won't affect the face. Um, so now, it needs a way to load itself into the cannon and then also chase Spyro around once it's been launched and it's landed and possibly miss Spyro. So we gotta give it hands. Uh, so the simplest thing that I can think of is if we add a cube. Uh, no, this way. Uh, get a cube. And then we'll do the old cheat maneuver. So in traditional animation, um, cartoonists would often give their characters uh, less fingers than like a you know what we're familiar with because it's simpler to draw it's simpler to kind of mass produce in an animation sense and it's less real estate in the in the hand uh, in th like in the in game in uh, modeling for gaming what I found out was that a lot of a lot of people that would model the characters for games in the old days, like 64, um, instead of actually trying to give characters actual fingers and stuff, they would just give them like a mitt, like an, like an oven mitt looking kind of thing. So that's what we're going to kind of replicate a little bit right now in a very haphazard manner. Oops, no, don't want that one. He's trying to just give a mitt to this guy. Scale on the Y. Bring it in. Oop, too far. Okay. Can bring this down a little bit. All right. So we've got a general hand. Now it's the thumb that I've always had a little bit of an issue with. Get rid of that edge. So I can continue this line, or I can fill this in and just hope that the rest of this thing kind of is OK. <laughs> um, so what I mean by that is pretty obvious, I think. So then I could just. I could lazily just fill that in and then take these points and fill that in. And that's a very basic hand. And what I could also do is I can select this face delete it then I can go back to this go oh no I'd have to delete that face too 
Delete this face. I wonder what this looks like. So if I go here, right, fill that. And then here, 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 fill that. Here, 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 fill. Is that, is that any better? Is that any worse? It's all right. Well, in any case, um, to avoid spending forever on a hand, uh, actually, I can hit A. Shift D to duplicate. Move it over to this side. And then um, the one of the things that I really fell in love with with um, the more recent versions of Blender were that um, a lot of its um, tabs and tools were just, they're just labeled stuff that you can kind of infer that it does the job that it reads as. So mirror vertices. Well, I have a bunch of vertices here. So I would assume that if I did it on the Y global, nope x global that it would flip this entire thing over so now i've got this guy going so now i got this guy and his hands up and he's just kind of like no don't flame me spyro Ma. um and so for the just to kind of wrap this video up uh, I want to go a little further. So let's actually, so when I tell people, you know, okay, so he, this guy, so if I ever wanted to go and get help, right, and I have to explain this guy, I'd like to kind of emphasize more that this is like a an animated cannonball, right? So uh, let's give him, let's further that look of a cannonball. So we'll actually make him, we'll begin, we'll begin the process of texturing. So we'll give him, we'll go into this mode to kind of see it better. We'll make him sort of a gray. And we'll make it metallic. But we'll leave the roughness at sort of a middle because he's not like super shiny, but he's also not like dull, right? Uh, and then we just have to remember 0 0.220, and we'll do the same thing for the hands. <laughs> so that should be the same shade, and we'll boost the metallic all the way up. So that's the hands. Now for the jaw, it's going to be kind of a lighter color because it's theoretically a different metal. Um, it too is metallic, so we'll boost that metallic. But we'll also boost the roughness because his jaw's been through a lot more than the rest of him. So that's still a little too dark. So let's make it contrast a little bit. Um, so militaristic helmet, so we're going to go with the traditional green, despite the fact that technically it should be a different color because the environment that they're in is mostly like browns and yellows. But we're going to make it this way, we'll boost the roughness. And so then, like I said, for the eyes, um, for ease of animation, I would do the pupils and any sort of emphasis in the eye area region in the textures and the paintings. Um, I would detail 
further the jaw with um, rivets along the edges, the outer edges, avoiding the teeth. And then I'd probably also put like some lesser lesser grays or silvers along the edge to kind of give it more detail there. And the hands are pretty basic, but I'm happy with what they are for now. Probably flatten them out. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the character that I've had in my head for the longest of time. Um, as Spyro, I really wouldn't want this thing to be launched out at me to land, laugh, and then start kind of chasing me for maybe like um, three to four little hand gallops before kind of giving up and then rolling back over to the cannon to be reloaded again. Um, if you out there know anything that I could have done to more efficiently create this guy or just do it in a faster manner, uh, let me know in the comments below. And I have a few other kind of creature designs that I already have in my head. Um, just by doing this jaw, it reminded me of this other creature that I've seen somewhere before, but I can't place it. Uh, that'll be the next episode, though. So I'll, I'll create that dogish like character, and you guys can tell me where I might have seen it before. Uh, beyond that, further episodes of this, um, I'm trying to draft up more like a Mad Libs kind of a thing so that I can challenge myself to push to kind of force myself to research more about what Blender can do, what I'm able to do within it. And um, we'll see what we can create from there. So uh, I hope to see you in the next episode. Signing off.